Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So in this video, I want to tell you a really cool story and I want to show you a new feature on Luminar Neo, which is HDR merge that's going to completely rock your world. So a little backstory. I've been working with a gallery called Yellow Corner, uh, which you can see here. Uh, it's uh, 120 galleries around the world and I've been selling a lot of photos with them. This is all the photos I have for sales. And the owner of the gallery said, you know, send me to Maine and to Italy to take some amazing photos, uh, you know, to just sell more work. And I sent it back to him and I did not hear any response for about a month. So I called him up, had a coffee with the owner of the galleries and he says, you know what? I rejected all your photos. I said, why? He says, what happened to you? You used to do like this crazy, you know, sort of HDR, fantastic kind of photography, you know, and now you're doing like this natural stuff, you know, uh, but it's not what sells. I'm like, really? Then he starts showing me this photo. He says, you see this photo, which was completely Photoshop. This photo is the biggest seller of Yellow Corner of all time, like all time. It never, never a photo sold so much money. I was like, really? Yes. And he says, you need to go back to what you were doing. So he starts showing me my own work. He says, you know, like for example, this photo here, the Terminator photo of Los Angeles, which was done in Aura HDR, by the way. He says, that's a great seller. It, it sells really, really well. I said, okay, I gotta find a way to rework out all my photos. I mean, you know, I gotta do what's needed and wanted. He wants crazy, uh, cool leak photo, let's do it. So what I did is, I just found out Luminar Neo came out with a new HDR feature. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do my main photo. Maine is a beautiful area. Um, in fact, this is the Arcata State Park that I'm gonna show you. And I'm gonna do an HDR in Luminar Neo and do everything. So let me show you. We're gonna go from this to this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the three photos, uh, one, two, and three. Uh, I'm on a Mac, so I use a, the Command key to select the photos. And I'm gonna drag it on this new option called HDR Merge. If you don't have the new option, you can get it here by clicking this little icon up here. You click on it and you can purchase it. I already have it. So you can get $10 off more if you use the code PHOTOSEARCH10 for PHOTOSEARCH10. So you click here, the link is under this video. You click on buy now. You click on enter a promotional code and you enter PHOTOSEARCH10 and it's gonna go from 139.90, boom, to 129.90. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag all three photos here on this new feature called AGR Merge. And I'm gonna, you see, it's minus two, zero, plus two, and click on Merge. And boom, it's creating like a new super raw file, but it's got this look that the gallery loves so much. So I'm gonna double click on it, and I'm gonna go crazy, guys. I'm gonna go, the gallery said, go from between reality and fantasy. So that's what I'm gonna go. That's the reality, I'm gonna go to fantasy. So the first thing I wanna do, I think, on this one, uh, is I wanna do um, a really cool sky replacement, so I'm gonna go to edit. And um, I, well, first let's make it a bit darker. It's too, it's too, it's too bright. So I'm gonna go to the develop module here. And then it's very similar like Lightroom or Luminar AI, or you know, if you've seen this software before, I'm just gonna lower the exposure a little bit, maybe add a bit of smart contrast because it's smart. And already it's looking kind of cool. I think I wanna warm up a little bit the photo, not so much, just a little bit, maybe add a bit of magenta, just a bit. I like to sort of retouch the colors before I do the sky replacement. Okay, I kind of like where this is going. I think I wanna make the photo a little bit darker. So let's go in black and white. Let's crush the blacks a little bit more. Maybe open a bit the shadows, bring down a little bit the highlights, maybe lower the exposure. I want like a moody look. I just didn't like that sky. I really didn't like the sky. I like everything else. It was like, a, three exposure, three lone exposure HDR. And so now comes the magic. I'm gonna go here to sky. And there's a feature I love in Luminar Neo that Photoshop doesn't have. I mean, you can drag and drop, but check this out. Uh, you have the choice to use different skies in Luminar Neo. For, for example, sunset, you know, you can just click and it's just gonna adapt with a different sunset, uh, which is there. And uh, well, it's keeping that dirt here, which I really don't want. Uh, I'm gonna have to clean that up. Anyways, but what I like to do is use my own sky. So what I did is you go to cus show custom skies and it opens the finder here, 
okay? And what I did is I drag and drop all my skies, my Florida skies, which are, were shot with a GFX 50 and a GFX 100 Fuji amazing camera. Shot all that. You can buy uh, the sky if you want. Uh, you know, the link is down below. And you just drag and drop all the JPEG in that folder and you're good to go. So that way I can go to uh, custom sky and I have all my skies. I have all my blue hour. So one thing you got to be careful when you change the sky. You see, the original sky was um, a sort of a end of golden hour sunset. It was a bad sunset. So we need to find a golden hour or a sunset, something around like, I'm thinking something like that. But the problem is the sky was, the sun was there. So we're going to have to flip it. This one is a little bit strong. Um, maybe this one. Um, I had another one that I think I used, which I like. Yeah, I think this is going to be it. This is going to be nice. But the problem with that, I like that sky. It's kind of the same if there was clouds, but we need to flip it. So let's flip it. I'm going to, so what you do is you click here and then you go to um, sky orientation flip. And now the sun is in the same position. Okay. Uh, you can play around with the horizontal position. Okay. I'm going to have to clean that up. Uh, vertical position, I'm not going to play around with that. Uh, sorry, H horizontal position. Uh, okay, something like that. Now, one thing I like to use a lot is relight strength. Check this out. Relight is going to change the light. So basically, it's going to make the foreground darker. Check it out. No relight, some relighting. I like that. I'm going to, I usually put relight strength all the way. And relight saturation is going to find whatever is going on there and try to put it on the, on the bottom. So boom. Let's see here, what does it do? It doesn't do a big difference here, but by default, I like to put it strong. Relight human, if there's a human. Now there's something weird going on here in the sky, so let's see if we can go to mask refinement, and then we can go to global, and see what happens. Just tweak around that, close gap, see what looks the best. Now that looks bad, that looks bad. Okay, I wanna make sure it's kinda of clean here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go crazy, look at this. Look at this area without global and going global. Uh, I think it's gonna do a much better job. Yeah, it does a much better job there. But you see it's still, it did something kinda of weird. Let's see if close gap is gonna do, yes. Close gap is doing a much better job, but now there's something a bit weird there. Okay, so what I did is I put down everything down to zero. Everything should be cool. It's just a bit of an issue there you see on that tree. So what you can do is just use the fixed detail option just a little bit so the tree comes back. Okay, but now there is like some weird white stuff. So close gap should maybe help. Yes, close gap is going to bring... Oh yeah, close gap did a great job. Yes, it's bringing back. Now it's a lot more natural. Maybe it's a bit strong. And I'm zooming in on this spot. Yeah, that looks kind of great. That's gonna that's gonna look good. Yeah, I went, you just have to play around with close gap, fixed details until it matches. But then now that I got the whole tree there, everything is back. Everything is kind of back as it is. It's kind of cool. And you gotta be careful because it, it needs to render. So sometimes it's gonna look grainy and then it's gonna render. But now it's kind of cool. Let's check it out before, after. Yeah, it actually works really great. Ooh, I love it, I love it. It even took a, a, the, the dust. So now, we're good on the sky. So just play around with close gap and fixed details if you have an issue. All right, so now let's play around with some other things going on here. Um, develop structure, you know, they love structure. Structure is a uh, structure, structure. I am French, I'm sorry. Um, but check this out, a little bit of structure. What it does, it does this so, sort of HDR look that my gallery loves so much. Let's give it to them. They want it, they want to sell it. Let's give it to them, you know, and uh, voila. Yeah, I don't like what it does to the sky, especially here. So you can always go to masking uh, and take a linear gradient. And I'm going to click and drag so that I only do the structure on the rocks. I don't want to do it on the sky. Uh, that's always a good idea to only do structure here. Voila. So back to adjustment. And now I'm only doing it here, which is kind of cool, which is kind of cool. All right. Details. Let's add a bit of details, small details, medium details. Same thing when it comes to detail. I only like to have it in the foreground. So I'm gonna click on masking, and this time I'm gonna take a brush, and I'm gonna strength maybe 50%, big brush. I'm just gonna paint a little bit of detail just on some of the rocks here in the foreground. Not everywhere, just a little bit like that. And that's it, and that's it. All right, let's go to landscape. Now landscape is a really amazing one. Landscape, 
I oh, look at this. Gold, I'm gonna do crazy golden hour, really makes it pop. Um, I like what it does, but it's too much. Let's go just a little bit of golden hour. You know, I mean, it has to pop. Like the guy wants a very saturated image. He wants it, he's gonna get it. Okay, maybe a bit of foliage on a hanser. Uh, foliage on is gonna make the trees very green. Nah, I don't like that on that. On, I, I like that they stay a little darker. Okay, vignette, no. Oh, let me show you this new feature called Relight AI. That's crazy. So what Relight AI is, is doing is creating a depth map, meaning you're going from the top of the photo, from where you are to the end. So if I go brightness near and I, I want to make the photo brighter in the front, it's going to make this brighter here. I actually want the opposite because I want people to look inside of the photo. So I can make, basically, I can darken the, what's close to me. And then same thing, brightness far. So I, you know, maybe make it a little brighter so far, and then you can change the depth map. So you can look at this. It's, in real time, it's going to change where it's making the front darker bar, and it's really working like a 3D software where it's finding out what's in, you know, what's far and what's close. It's crazy. I mean, Luminar Neo is so stable too. I haven't had one crash uh, since I use it, which is really good. Like they recoded the whole software. So if you ever had Luminar in the past, you're like, oh, it's, you know, it's a bit crashing. You got to try Luminar Neo, especially with this HDR feature. It's crazy. Okay, let's continue. G film grain. I like to add a bit of grain, just a little tad, just to mix everything up. That's way too much. Let's just a little tad. You have to go like maybe like, yeah, like maybe five or something. Yes, five is very fine. You can hardly see it on the screen, but it's kind of cool. Okay, check it out. This is where we are before, after. Ooh. Okay, they want... They want fantastic. I'm giving them fantastic. Make sure you use the code photo surge uh, if you want to buy it. Okay, super contrast. Now, super contrast has been there forever. I absolutely love it. What it does is different contrast for the highlight, the mid tones, and the shadows. So just play around with it. Uh, highlights is going to be my mostly my sky. It's going to make it even more poppy, which I actually don't want. Uh, maybe the mid tones. Yeah, a little bit. And um, color harmony can be sometimes kind of cool. Like basically. You have to, it, it's a very powerful tool. So if you go here on the right side, it's gonna try to make everything kind of warm. It's different than a white balance. And then when you go here, it makes every, everything kind of blue. So actually, maybe I wanna make everything kind of blue. Okay, now I wanna make that lone exposure pop in the water. So I'm gonna go to two things, mystical and glow. So mystical, like I'm gonna add a lot of mystical. What it does is some kind of glow. Uh, which I kind of like, but I only want it on the water. So you go to masking and you said, I just want to brush this on the water. I, you know, 50% strength and let's just brush it here on the water. So by default, it's making a little red where you're brushing. But as soon as you let go, it's going to do its magic. Boom, it applies the filter there. And if you want to see the before and after, you get a little eye before, after. It's kind of subtle, but when you add mystical and glow, now that's when the real magic. So check this out. Glow. I'm gonna I'm gonna overdo it. So focus. What it's doing is, uh, you know, it's making everything soft. So same thing. Masking. I'm gonna use a brush. Uh, maybe 50 percent. A little bit bigger size. And I only want this on the water. Maybe here and here. Just because I did a lone exposure and I want the water to like sort of be glowy. And maybe here around the trees here. Um, just to around the sun here. To make it a little more glowy, yes, something like that. Ooh, look at that. Check it out. Before, after, before, after. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that nuts? Uh, it's, you know, I've been refusing to do this kind of photography for the last four years because I teach natural drama and I still love it. But I really think it's good to master both worlds. Natural drama and non-natural drama. Okay, I used a filter that somehow created like a blue thing here. Uh, but anyway, it's fine because I'm going to recrop it. I'm pretty happy with this. I am pretty... Oh, yes. Let's do a bit of dodge and burn. I'm going to show you the dodge and burn here. So dodge and burn, they have this new feature called amount, which I really love. So by default, I'm going to darken. I want to darken a little bit some of uh, some of these rocks here. So maybe lower the size, lower the strength. I just want to darken a little bit some of these rocks here. And then... Um, and then on the opposite, I want to brighten again some of the water. So you just go to lighten and then uh, I want, because, you know, what's cooler than lone exposure? Look at that. What is cooler than lone exposure? 
and then it's a little too much so you got an amount filter and it's the overall amount so i just do a little bit i like to overdo it and then go back and voila and then you have to wait for everything to render let's crop this beautiful photo and i'm sure the gallery is going to go that's going to be a best selling photo yes sir thank you luminar neo <laughs> okay so i'm going to crop this uh, maybe like that well, I, I love 16 by 9. That's what I mostly sell in my gallery. I really, really like it. And it's going to render. Voila. Okay, check it out. Before, after. Talk about going from boring to fantastic. Check out Luminar Neo. I mean, it's the best tool there is. Every time my gallery wants me to go fantastic, I get Luminar Neo and AGI Merge. And boom, voila. Make sure you use the link. You can get $10 off and it helps support this channel if you buy it from me. I do get a commission if you buy it from here. It helps me make more free videos for you, but it's such a cool software. Any photographer should have this. So you could be able to do the classical natural, but you should be able to do this also if you want to go fantastic. You never know. You might get famous.